Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to create a vector portrait using an image inside of Inkscape. I'm using Inkscape version 1.1.1 which is the latest version of Inkscape at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of video tutorials on here, as well as free software help articles, so definitely check that out. Plus, you can get access to more content by becoming a DMD Premium member, and I'll include a link to this, as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. Here is the final composition we'll be creating for today's tutorial, and to start us off, we're going to just go to File, New. And we're just going to use the default composition for Inkscape. So this should be the default document size for everybody. I do just want to change something real quick. So I'll go to File, Document Properties. And you'll see this is the A4 page size. But down here, I'm going to make sure border on top of drawing is checked. And then I'm just going to exit out of here. Next, we'll bring in the photo I want to use for this tutorial. So I'm going to open up my File Explorer. And here is the photo I downloaded. This will be free. I'll make it available to download in the description of the video. So we'll just click and drag this into our composition and release. And it's going to ask us how we want to import the JPEG. And I'm just going to go with the import type of link, which should save us some file space. And then just go with the default settings here and click OK. And I'll minimize this. So here's the photo. I'll hold control, zoom out with the mouse wheel. And with the select tool, the image should be selected. If not, just click on it until you get these little handles. And we're just going to click and drag the handle in while holding the control key. If you hold shift, it'll drag it from the center. And I'll just reposition this. That should be good right about there. And I just want to center this using my mouse. So I'm going to use the right arrow. Center this using the keyboard, I should say. So I'm just looking at the jacket here. So that's pretty straight right there. Next, I'm going to click on Align and Distribute Objects. And then I'll make sure this is set to Relative to Page. And I'm just going to horizontally align this to the image. And that looks pretty good there. So we'll exit out of here. So now we're going to go to Layer, Layers. And we're just going to come over here, click on Layer 1, and rename this image. I'll be creating layers as we go just to keep everything nice and organized. And also just to make sure we don't lose any work, I'll hit Control S to save this. And let's name this Vector Portrait Composition. Hit the Enter key. And now we can hit Control S as we go to save our work. So to get started on this design, let's start off by creating a new layer. So inside the Layers dialog, I'm just going to click this little plus icon. And let's start with the face. I'll rename this face. And position will set to Above Current and click Add. So now we have a new face layer. So now new paths that we draw will be drawn on this layer. Next, we're going to come over to the Toolbox and grab the Pen Tool or the Bezier Curves Tool. You can also use the shortcut key B for that tool. And now I'm going to hold control and use my mouse wheel to zoom in. And let's come over here to the rollers and just click and drag to create a guide. And we'll put this around the center of his face. And now we're just going to click to create our first node. Click and drag the mouse. And while I'm still dragging the mouse, if I hold the shift key, I can change the direction of just a single node. So what I like to do is just point the node in the direction I'm going to go in next. So towards this part of the chin up here. So we're going to draw the second part. Again, hold shift key. Sometimes you have to do that, sometimes you don't. So right here we're going to have to do it. So hold control, or I'm sorry, hold shift to change direction. So we're going to go off in this direction here and release. And hold control, use the mouse wheel to zoom in. So basically that's automatically creating what's called a corner in Inkscape. Anytime you hold shift while you're dragging this and changing the direction of a single node, that is entering the cornering mode for that node. So now we're just going to continue up here. And by the way, that does take a little practice to know when a good time is to hold the shift key versus releasing it versus not holding it at all. 
So really just getting that timing down is sort of an art form in itself. But we're going to skip the hair and we're going to go around the outline of the face. And we're going to try to stay inside the hairline itself. So that line's pretty straight as are these right here. Use the space bar as a hand tool. And we're going to hold the shift key while we're still holding the mouse and change direction. And we're just going to end this right here, but hold the shift key and drag it down. So try to drag that towards the guide and release. And now we're just going to bring this all the way down to the starting point and close that off. So you can grab the nodes tool, hold control, zoom in, and you may need to tweak some of these nodes here. So right here, I think is where I screwed up the most. So just tweak this as needed. If you hit the delete key, you could just get rid of nodes if you need to, like I just did there. So we don't need this to be perfect, which means this will probably work for us. And I'm just going to grab the select tool. Once I'm ready, I'll hit control D. That's going to duplicate this. And I can either hit the H key on the keyboard or just click on one of these. So in this case, it is this icon right here to flip this. And I'll come back here, click and drag my mouse while holding the control key. And it should snap to that guide I created there. Make sure your snapping's turned on if it's not. Then we'll hold the shift key and click. Both of these are now selected and we'll go to path union. And that should merge the two face shapes into a single shape. So yes, this isn't gonna match up perfectly with the original, but that's all right. So next we're going to come over here. We're gonna actually do the neck part. So we'll come over here, click to add a new layer. We'll name this neck. And we'll position this below the current layer since we want it below the face layer and click add. So there it is. So hit the B key on the keyboard and hold control zoom in. So for this part, we're going to click and again start creating some curves. But instead of just duplicating this, we're going to actually bring it all the way over here and try to somewhat line it up with the neck here. Let me use the space bar. So it'll be a little off. Let me hit control Z. And use the shift key once again to adjust the handle here. And release. And I'm just going to bring the neck all the way down here below the shirt. And then we can bring it over here and just connect that right there. So there's the neck. Next up, we're gonna do the shirt. So let's come over here, create a new layer. This one we can set above the current and we'll just name it shirt. And click add. We still have the Bezier curves tool. So we're just going to, as best we can, try to get this shirt going. Get it nice and matched up here. And then we're going to bring it down like so and hold control zoom in. So this part's a little off uh, in terms of being on the center there. So that's okay. We're just going to sort of adjust it or tweak it, but I'll hold the shift key to bring this node back up and release it. Hold control zoom out with the mouse and we'll just sort of get that back on track there. Use the space bar as a hand tool and we will connect that. So now we'll do the jacket. So again, create a new layer. We're gonna name this jacket. We'll set it above the shirt layer and click add. Hold control, zoom in. So let's start right about here and hold control, zoom in a bit more. We're gonna just make that a nice straight line. And then for these, we'll make the curve a little bit offset there, a little bit more curved. And then we're going to bring it around this corner, hold the shift key to change that direction. Space bar to move over. So 
We'll bring it right here up to the neck. And let me hit Control Z because I actually have to click and drag and then use the Shift key to change the direction of that like so. And to save us some time, I'm really just going to try to make this as close to the original neckline as possible. We can always clip it out, but I prefer not to have to do that. So hold the Shift key to redirect this node here. Make it independent. And now we're just going to sort of loosely follow the shirt line here. And we'll come down here a bit. And hold control zoom in. So we'll try to match these up. And release. Actually, I'm going to hit control Z because I don't need to go that far down. I'm just going to go down to right here. So hold the shift key to change the direction there. And shift key, use the space bar. I'm going to connect that. And it's okay if that doesn't perfectly match the original. All right, so I think in this case, we're going to just duplicate this, bring it over here, and then tweak the lines as needed. So let's grab the select tool, control D to duplicate it, H key to flip it. We're gonna drag it on over, holding the control key as we drag. And we're gonna align it like there. Grab the node tool, hold control, zoom in. And so with the node tool, you can click and drag and select multiple nodes simultaneously. And then we can drag these in. Let's click off of them. And it might just be easier to redraw this from scratch, to be honest. So yeah, we're just gonna redraw this from scratch. So let's click on here and hit the backspace key and grab the Bezier curves tool or the pen tool. We're still on the jacket layer. So let's come up here to any starting point and let's just draw this from scratch. And we'll just go ahead and connect that. All right, so we basically have all the base elements besides the hair. So let's come over here to the face layer, create a new layer, name it hair, click add. So we're going to set a base layer for the hair. And then once we do that, we're gonna color everything in. And uh, that's really where the fun stuff happens. So let's start anywhere over here. Get the hair going. Hold control zoom in. So we're going to control Z. So if you create a curve here, use the shift key to change the direction. Shift key, change direction. Shift key, change that direction there. So again, that kind of comes with practice and is a bit of an art form at times, feels like it. Hold the shift key. And for this part, we're going to hold the shift key, bring this in and change the direction. So we'll add this hair follicle here, hold shift, bring it in. Hold shift, bring it in and we'll add this hair follicle here as well. So we've got two of them going on. You don't need to add every single hair follicle. You just need a few pieces of detail and the viewer really can fill in the rest on their own. So right here, we've got some hair follicles. So I'll hold control, zoom in. So we're going to start it right here. Hold shift, change the direction. Hold shift, bring it here. And we don't need to do every single one of these, just enough to add a little detail. We'll come down a little bit. We'll do one more here. Shift, bring it in. Shift. All right, so the ear's gonna line up a little differently because we just duplicated the face to start with. So we don't need to come all the way down here. We'll just come over like so and bring this up. 
And I'm going to hit Control S once again just to save this. And now I'm just going to very loosely follow the original hairline we created here. But for up here, I'm just going to make it a little bit more wavy. Try to emulate this sort of widow's peak he's got going on here. And let me hit Control Z to back up. I do want to make sure I do a decent job with this. So I may need to hold Shift and just change the direction on that. And we'll bring it back around. And just connect that. All right, so now we have all the base elements. So next what we'll do is color this in and then we'll start to add the details throughout this. So the details are really where this portrait starts to come to life. Otherwise it's gonna look a little bit bland. So let's start with the hair since we're already on it. I'm down here inside of the default palette. You can use this little menu item here and click on Inkscape default. And I'm just gonna change the hair color to black. And then we'll click on the face and you can tell which item you're on because you'll see the layer light up over here. So let's go with some skin tones here. And we're going to change these colors later as we add more details, but we'll do the neck here. And shift click on these two. Let's just go with a slightly lighter gray. And then the shirt, we'll maybe do a green color. I don't know if I like that green too much. All right. All right, so the reason I like to add all the colors in here is now we can get an idea of if anything needs to be tweaked. Uh, there's probably a couple of things that need to be tweaked right here, for example. So we can grab the nodes tool and just sort of make some minor edits here and just try to make it look a bit more natural. It's really gonna come together at the very end, but, but for now, this is a good place to start. So let's leave it right there. So if we click on the face here, we can now get to the face details, but first I'm going to go to object, objects. So we're on the face layer, but you can see now there's multiple objects here inside that one single layer. So this is the original face path that we drew. What I can do inside of the objects dialog is just turn the opacity down a bit and that's going to allow us to see what's going on underneath there. And we'll probably have to come over here to the neck as well and just turn that down a bit. So let's come back up to the face. So now what I'll do is hit the B key and we're just going to start with any of the details. So let's go with the eyebrows because they are prominent. And this is coming from a guy with prominent eyebrows. So we're just going to quickly outline this and grab the select tool, control D to duplicate it, H to flip it and just drag it on over like so. So now let's move along. We're gonna come over here to the curves tool again, hold control, zoom in, and let's do the glasses now. And I'm gonna have to decrease the opacity of the hair. So let's click on the hair layer and just turn that down. So we'll come back here to the face layer and I'm just gonna draw the main rim part of the glasses first. So let's come down here, click to start it. And Hold control. There we go. And with this curves tool still selected, we're going to just draw the bridge here. Actually, let's just draw it halfway and then duplicate it. So there is that. So I'm gonna grab the select tool and let's just Grab the Bezier Curves tool again, and we're just going to very quickly draw. So actually I'm gonna hit Control Z. I'm just gonna leave that out because I don't think that's gonna add anything. But we've got the glasses here. So what I'll do is uh, let me finish the top portion here. So let's grab the Curves tool. Very quickly, we're just going to draw this. and hold shift, actually let's fix that, hold shift, bring it in, and we'll just draw this line here. Let me hit control Z, let's just bend it slightly to 
create a slight curve there. Release. All right, so now we have all the elements of the glasses, uh, at least for one half. So what we're gonna do is we're going to shift click on everything and hold control, zoom in, make sure we shift click on the right stuff. We're gonna hit control G to group it. So now it's gonna place everything inside of a group and then control D to duplicate it. And then what I'll do, click off of here, click back on, hit the H key to flip it. And then we're going to drag it over while holding the control key. And you may need to reposition it slightly. So it's not gonna align perfectly. Actually, that's probably fine. We will probably have to correct it later. And then what you can do is shift click to select both sides of the glasses, control G to group both of those groups into a single group. So now it's all over here in a single group. Now I can click on here, double click, and rename this eyeglasses, hit the enter key. All right, and eventually it'll show up there. Inkscape's getting a little buggy on me right now, but it did eventually rename that group. So now let's hit the B key again, and this time we're gonna do the eyes. So we're gonna try to put in as much detail with the eyes uh, without putting in too much to give everybody an idea of what's going on. So we're just going to hold the shift key, bring it in. So in other words, if I get too detailed with the portrait, it really just starts to look like a bad drawing. Whereas if we had just enough details to everything, it brings to life enough of the uh, person to where you could tell it's a person uh, without overdoing it. So now we're gonna grab the ellipse tool here or the circle tool, hold control, and I'm gonna have to release. So I'm gonna come over here to my palettes, shift click to get rid of that stroke, and then just left click on the black. So that's going to reset the type of circle that'll draw here. So let me just hit the backspace key on that and grab the circle tool again, click and drag and release. So let's bring this over here. Then what I'll do is click on the outline of the eye, control D to duplicate it. And then I'm gonna shift click on the actual iris here and we'll go to object, clip, set. And that should clip out the uh, part of the iris that went outside here of the eye shape. And then what we can do is shift click on these two items, control G to group them, control D to duplicate, H to flip, and then we're gonna bring it on over here to about right here. It's gonna look funny when we have the original right below it, but uh, once we get rid of the original, so if I hide, you can see it looks a little bit more normal there. So let's unhide that. And if you want, you can shift click on the two eyes, control G to group those together, double click on this and rename this eyes, hit the enter key, and that should update that. So I'm not gonna add like all the details to the eyes. This is gonna be good enough behind the uh, sunglasses once we color it all in. So now once again, I'll grab the curves tool, the Bezier curves tool, and let's go with the lips next. So this I'll just very quickly draw. So hold shift, hold shift. And then draw a line through this. and hit the enter key and that will apply that. So now we got the lips and we're gonna group that later, but for now we're gonna move on. So let's go with the nose here. So for this, I'm gonna come up top, actually hit control Z, I'm gonna start right here. Again, this is one of those things where you want there to be some detail, but not too much. So I'm just gonna click and drag right here and release and hit the enter key. And then we're gonna move down here and just add a little bit of a curve there to the nose and release, hit the enter key. And then under here, same thing, just like that. So I'm just gonna do one half of the nose there. And then I'm just gonna do a line right here to indicate that there's a little bit of a curve there. And I have snapping turned on. I'm gonna turn that off because it's kind of bugging me right now. Hit the enter key, hold control, zoom in, 
And now what we can do is just draw the nostril. Hold the shift key. Sometimes this takes me multiple goes to get the nostril right. That looks fine for now. So I'm going to left click to fill that in. So there we have the nose. As you can see, I didn't get too crazy with it. Shift click to select all of the paths that have to do with this nose. Control G to group. Control D to duplicate. H to flip. Drag it on over. And hold control while you drag. And I do need to turn the snapping back on, of course, and just make sure that snaps there to the guide. And now we can shift click on the two groups here for the nose, control G to group them together, double click, rename this nose, hit the enter key. So let's do the beard and the mustache. So you guessed it, we're going to grab the pen tool or the Bezier curves tool and let's turn off snapping. And then we're just going to very quickly Create a rough outline here. So hold the shift key. Hold the shift key. And I'm just going to stop the mustache right there. Bring it all the way in. Release. And then for the beard, I'm going to very loosely draw the beard. Let's come up top here. And try to follow the line we already drew here for the face. So we'll bring it up here, connect. That should be good. So we'll grab the select tool, hold control, zoom in, shift click, control G to group, control D to duplicate, H to flip. Hold control while we drag it over and let's turn on snapping and snap it to the guide. So now we will shift click, select the two groups, control G to group them together, double click, rename it beard. So we'll grab the pass tool again and we're just going to add some detail to the ear without overdoing it. Hit the enter key. Let me actually hit control Z. I'm going to start that over and just go all the way down here. Hit the enter key. And then in the original, I just sort of added one little detail there and another one somewhere around here. Hit the enter key. So we're just going to shift click, control G to group, control D to copy. H to flip it, and we're just going to move this to the other side. And I'm just going to have to eyeball it because it's not in the exact same spot as the original. All right, so now let's come over here back to the eyebrows. We're going to shift click on these. I actually didn't group these, so control G to group and rename this eyebrows. But we can just left click to fill these in with black. And same with the beard. Actually with the beard, what we're going to do is go to path union. And I'm going to have to ungroup these. So control shift G to ungroup. And then I'm just going to shift click on the two sides and go to path union. So they are not uh, being merged together, but because they're going to be the same color, we can just color those in and it's fine. We don't have to merge them together. All right, so next we're going to continue adding some details to the hair. So what we're going to do with the select tool here is just click on the hair. That should take us to the hair layer. You can collapse the face layer and pretty much all the other layers here as well, or just the objects, I guess. You should technically be in the hair layer there, but we're back here in the objects dialog. So let's hit the B key to grab the Bezier curves tool. And what we're going to do now, we're going to hold control, zoom in, so I'm just going to add some detail here by sort of outlining the highlights of the hair. You're going to have to get a little creative with this part and I'll probably speed through a lot of this because a lot of it is going to be the same. And then you're just going to find a starting point, click to start, and we're just going to create a little curve here. And then we're going to start by clicking and dragging, hold shift, change the direction of this. 
And we're just going to do this along pretty much the entire image here. Let me hit Control Z and redo that. Shift. All right, so I accidentally grabbed another tool which sort of hid my path. Because I'm still selected on this path, I can start it from right here. The only issue is I can't really see the path anymore. So what you have to do is grab the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. There you can see the path. And I recommend just coming over here and left clicking to fill it in with the color. And then you can come back, grab the Paths tool, and then you'll see right here the last node. So click on that to start back off from there and then you can just sort of continue on. It's just an annoying thing that Inkscape does, and uh, they really need to fix that if they haven't already. Hopefully I just don't know about it. And then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna bring this around like so, and then we can always sort of add a little flair as we go. So hold the Shift key, bring this in a bit, and then bring it back down. I like to just add little like hair follicles as I go. And finally, just connect it right there. So we're probably gonna have to tweak that a little bit. But now we have some hair highlights there and a little bit of detail. So now we'll add a bit more detail to the hair by sort of adding that same effect you see going on here around parts of the hairline. So I'm gonna hold control, zoom in. I don't need to get too crazy with this. And this is the part that's gonna stick out, everything that goes beyond this line here. So that's really all we need to focus on, just adding a couple little hair sticking out here. All right, so now we can grab the select tool and just shift click on everything. And then we can shift click on the X here and then left click on the black color. And now you can see we've got some little detail going on there. So let's hold control, take a step back here. So right now we're on the hair layer, which has the opacity turned down. So let's turn it all the way up so you can see what's happening here. So what we'll do is left click on the white and we're gonna come over here and just change this to like a dark gray. And now I'll hit the B key again and we're just gonna add a little bit of highlights to some of the tips here of the hair. So pretty much just right here So we're just going to click somewhere near the base of this one. And again, this is going to take a little bit of creativity. So something like that. But we're going to shift click and left click on a lighter color like so. So hopefully we can get that going, that color. We don't need to do every single one, but just, you know, a decent amount of them. All right, so now let's grab the select tool and we're just going to shift click on these. Hopefully we click on the right shapes. And I'm going to left click on that gray and then shift click on the, the X here to get rid of the stroke. And let me go with the slightly lighter gray there. So there we go. Now we've got some highlights going on. All right, so let's move on here to the neck. And I'm just going to click on the neck. And this is the same sort of principle. We're just going to very quickly add some detail by drawing some lines. 
Try not to get too crazy with it. Maybe do this part right here. That looks pretty good. And I'll grab the select tool. I'm gonna to click on the jacket. So let's click on both of these by shift clicking and just drag the opacity down. And I just wanna add some detail lines here. So I'll probably just add one right here and then one right here. So let's grab the curves tool and we're gonna click on here to create a new curve. Drag it, hit the enter key. And we'll do the same right here. So I believe I stopped right there. So we'll just go about right here. Hit the enter key. So we'll do the same on this side. Hit the enter key. And hit the enter key. So now we'll do the shirt. So let's grab the select tool, click on the shirt, and we're going to grab the Bezier curves tool and just draw. Let's actually turn the opacity down on this. So we're going to draw the second line here and we're going to turn it into a stitch to try to make it look a little cooler. Just like that, hit the enter key. All right, so now let's get everything back to the proper opacity and try to start coloring things in and adding some texture. So we're gonna shift click on these two. We're gonna bring that up. Click on the shirt, bring that up. Click on the neck, bring that up. Click on the face, bring that up. And I think for this part, we can pretty much come over for now and hide the image. Hold control, zoom in, so we've got these two eyes. Let's control shift G to ungroup. Control shift G to ungroup these, control shift G. And we're gonna click on the pupils here. I think I called them the irises earlier. Oops, control Z. Turn the opacity up. All right, so we're gonna click on the lips and I just went with like a purplish color for this. Try not to make him look like he's got lipstick on. So what I'll do for this actually is come over here and grab the gradient tool and just click and drag to create a gradient. And what I'll do is come over here and I'm gonna double click on the fill over here and let's just turn the alpha all the way up, which is the opacity. And also let's change the color. And then come up to the top color here and change that color. And right now looking a little bit too much like lipstick, but we're going to drag this down. So I didn't go too crazy with the detail on this, but that looks fine right there. We'll grab the select tool and click on the neck here. So again, I'm gonna add a gradient, do something like this. So we're on the first one here. We're gonna turn the alpha all the way up and we need to come back to the color we used, the skin tone. And then click on this first one, maybe go with slightly darker. And then grab the select tool, grab the face here, click on the gradient tool. And I drew the gradient, I believe from about right here. But this one, I went with the radial gradient. And I may need to come over here. Gradient tool is a little weird in Inkscape, but uh, right here is where we're gonna start the gradient. So this is the color that's selected right now. So I'm gonna go with Maybe that color right there and then click on the first color and we're going to go with a lighter color for that like so. All right. So next for the glasses here, I'll hold control zoom in. Everything's grouped right now. So I don't want to ungroup everything and then have to style everything individually. So what I'll do is just click on the group and I'm going to shift click on this yellow color here. And what that's going to do is automatically style everything to the same style. And then I'm going to come over and let's change this to pixels if it'll let me. And then I'm going to increase this to two. 
So that looks better. And then let me click off of here. Uh, for these two, I'm going to need to style these elements differently, these shapes here. So let me grab the Edit Paths by Nodes tool and try to select this shape here. So shift click to get rid of that color. And we're going to left click on the yellow color and control C to copy that. Come over here. We're going to hover, try to select that shape, control shift V to paste the styling. And now we've got our glasses. And the glasses are currently below the hair just because of the order of everything. So what I'll do is come over here and I'm going to collapse the eyeglasses group. Control X to copy that. And that's what our guy looks like with no glasses. I'm going to come up top here, create a new layer, and name it Glasses. Click Add. Control V to paste. And let me hit Control Z and go to Edit, Paste in Place. And now our glasses are going to be pasted on top there. And they're going to be on their own little layer too. So let's just finish off the styling of these glasses by clicking on the major shape here. And what I'm going to do is click to add a gradient. And then just click and drag inside here. So that'll give us a gradient inside the glasses here. So this is a radial gradient. Let me just double click on here and change this to a linear gradient. And let's click on one of the stops here. So I went with like a reddish color originally. So I'm going to go with the red there. Click on this side. We'll do another red there. And I'm going to shift click on these because I actually want the alpha or the opacity to be a little lower so we could see the eyes, but not too low. And I'll hit control C to copy that. And we'll grab the edit paths by nodes tool. We're going to click on there, control shift V to paste the styling. And now we've got cool glasses on this guy. Control S to save. So really a couple of final touches here. And that is going to be mainly the lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on the line here and let's see if I can shift click. I don't think I can do all these simultaneously, but let's go to path, path effects. Yeah, so only one at a time. So with the path effects window open, let's click off of here. We'll click on a path here and then we're going to click the plus button. And I'm going to scroll down to taper stroke. Hold control zoom in so as you can see it's going to give us a nice tapered stroke there. And you can play around with the settings until you get the final look that you want. So that looks pretty good to me. What I'll do now is come over here and click on this path and go to path, paste path effect. So that's going to just paste that exact same effect and let me come over here and if I shift 7 on that, yeah, it will do the same effect there so that'll save you some time. And I'm going to do the same for all these path effects here or all these paths. So I'm just going to shift click on all of them and then hit shift 7. So that's going to paste the same effects. This one ended up a little wonky but that's okay. All right, just a couple of finishing touches here and we will be completed. So we're just going to shift click on these two here, the jacket portions, and then we're going to left click on stroke. We'll come over to stroke style. Let's change this to pixels and let's try three pixels there. That looks pretty good. So click off of there. And if you want, you can also click on the shirt and increase that a little bit. We'll go with two on that. So to finish this off, I would usually add the taper stroke to the remaining paths. So I'm going to hold control, zoom in. Let's get rid of this guide here. And I'm going to click on the nose, control shift G, control shift G. I'm just ungrouping all this. And Inkscape has crashed on me a couple times trying to do this already, but I'm going to click to create a new live path effect and we'll go tapered stroke. And we're just going to adjust this. That looks pretty good. So control C, come over here, path, paste path effect. And this is going to be slightly different. So I'll come over here. Okay. 
control C to copy that. So just copy that effect there. And let's copy this effect, control C and shift seven. Paste it here, shift seven. And let's come over here and make sure this is ungrouped or Inkscape will crash. It does not like when you try to copy live path effects. So control C and paste them to a group. And these two, we're gonna actually use this one. So control C, shift seven, control C, shift seven. All right, so there is our finished portrait. To export this, go to File, Export PNG Image. Go with the Page option. I'm gonna keep this set to where it's at. Hit Export, and there it is. All right, that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to click the Like button, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.